strong. Holistic Beauty RN. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're an OG, oldie buddy goodie, welcome back. So in today's video, if you haven't already gathered by the title, I will be demonstrating how to perform a pap smear. And just so you know, it's not on a real person, but on my gynecological model here. This model I got off of Amazon. So basically it's just a female um, lower half or vaginal uh, model so that you can see on the inside. It opens up is the cervix and some other female structures here, the vaginal canals. And then of course it closes to reveal the vaginal opening. So I've got my gynecological model here that I just got from Amazon and then my speculum, which is going to be the star of the show as I demonstrate how to insert that to perform form a proper pap smear. So if you're interested in watching this video and learning a thing or two, stay tuned. And just as a disclaimer, this video is just for educational purposes only. I highly recommend that the best way to get experience and to get the most accurate, up-to-date, step-by-step experience is by working under the, di the direction and training of a licensed medical provider, such as a medical doctor, nurse practitioner, physician assi assistant, your clinical instructor, university instructor, etc. That is the best way. This video is just for learning and demonstration purposes only, okay? So I hope you guys enjoy this video. And let's get into it. Here's the model here. Got this model. You just open it. You see the cervix back there. This is the vaginal lining here. So when it's closed, it would be how it looks in real life with the woman. And that's the vaginal opening. So you would always tell your patient what you're about to do. Don't just go in there gung-ho. You always want to let them know what's going on so that they're going to know what to expect and not be caught off guard like, whoa! Okay, so. so. in this instant, telling them, hey, you know, I'm getting ready to perform the pap smear. You can kind of show them the tool that you're using. This is a speculum. This is what I'm gonna use to insert into the vagina, especially it's good to be very informative and educational during this process, especially if it's their first time, they don't know what to expect. So it could be, you know, kind of a scary experience. You know, they're already in a very vulnerable position, you know, where they've got their goods all exposed to you and you're seeing every little nook and cranny, you know, of their woman parts. So it is very crucial to be educational, calming, relaxing, you know, not to seem, you know, in any way, try not to offend them, you know, especially, um, if there's maybe anything abnormal, you might notice like an odor or something. You don't want to put that out there or let that reflect in your interaction with them because that may become offsetting or off-putting to the patient. And now you've got a patient who is uncomfortable even more so. Um, and they definitely don't want to go through the procedure uh, with you. So you definitely want to educate them as far as what's going on. So the purpose of this video is to demonstrate how um, to do a pap smear using a speculum or basically to insert the speculum, how to go through that process. I'm not really gonna go through the whole process of um, doing the pap smear. And this video is just to kind of show you, um, just to kind of familiarize you with the process of how it looks and just to kind of get familiar with the tools that is used, such as this object here, which is a speculum. So just to kind of really show you guys, cause I know in the beginning for me, it was a little, <laughs> uh, took a little getting used to um, as far as how to work the speculum here, especially after you've done the insertion and you want to keep the specimen open or keep the uh, speculum open because as you can see, pressing on this lever, it allows it to open. Now, the whole point of it is inserting and then pressing on the liver lever so that it can remain open so that obviously the vaginal walls could be spread apart in such a way to where you can 
see and examine the cervix, which is all the way down on the inside, especially, you know, you have your light ready, the speculum, um, luckily has a tab. I don't know if you can see it, this red tab here up. Oh can't see it there you go that little red tab there that I'm flicking it has a tab where if I pull it out it'll light up so that's very convenient these type of um, speculums I'm not going to pull it out now because I kind of want to conserve and save you know the uh, life of this object here so I'm not going to pull it out but typically you know once you insert and you um, maneuver this to keep it open you would essentially then pull out the tab to light it up um, so that you can see the area of the cervix where you will be examining or collecting your sample for a pap smear or gonorrhea chlamydia test um, so basically to show you how to use the speculum so as you see here it has this lever as i've mentioned so you'll push that you hear how it clicks so you just push it the more you push it forward it'll click on one of these and open it up wider essentially now typically i will um, push it to where it it goes on the second one so where you heard two clicks because obviously the wider you go or you know the further you push this it's going to open it up wider that could create a lot of discomfort for some women especially if their walls are a little tighter um so you really want to be careful with doing that not to do it so quickly in a sense to where there's immediate discomfort and then now you have a patient who is um possibly in pain because of that so if that accidentally happens because i know this kind of takes some getting used to um the quickest way to use especially if you're using these type of speculums the yeah. brand of this is in um er speculum i don't know that's the brand er speculum so um i don't know what other brands they would come in um, but if you're using this particular type of speculum uh, to re release the click especially if you've accidentally went too far and it's causing discomfort in any way you would just press on the lever and at the same time raise this white part and now it brings the lever out so you see what you've done is you've unlocked it essentially. So you, you've, you've raised the white part while keeping a hold on this so that it's not going all over the place. But again, we're not gonna do that until the speculum is actually inserted into the vagina. So before then, it would just be closed completely like so um, because obviously if it's too high, you can't insert it in this position. It would have to be closed completely for you to insert it because that would be impossible to get it into her vagina if it's already open like that. So you wanna make sure it's closed all the way and then when you take it out of the package, it's gonna be closed all the way anyway. So this is our model here. Here is our vagina. Like I said, you wanna really walk them through. This is the vagina, this is the anus. Let's <laughs> make sure that we're going for the right hole here. Um, if we remember from our anatomy class, or women, you know, we are women, so, um, you know, we would <laughs> know the difference, let's hope. Uh, so yeah, this is how we would do it. Um, we, of course, this would be a real life person um, in this instance, but, uh, Obviously, for the sake of this video, we're not going to use a real life person. We're going to use a demonstration model as I have here. So then we have our object here. Like I said, going to talk them through, especially if it's their first time, what you're doing. So you essentially have them spread their legs, tell them, you know, what you're doing. And then right at the point of insertion, let them know. And at this point, too, I forgot to mention you would have already lubed the speculum because, you know, it, it is dry. So you want to make sure it's lu uh, lubricated with some, um, you know, sterile lubricating jelly, medical jelly, um, so that it'll make insertion a lot easier and more comfortable. So once you've done that, then you would tell them and guide them through um, such and such. I'm getting ready to insert the speculum. It might be a little cold and uncomfortable initially because of the jelly and uh, because I'm going in. Uh, let me know if there's any discomfort as I'm doing so and you would slowly do so. You're not going to jam it in there because obviously that's going to be painful. So you're just going to slowly go in and you're always going to go in at an angle. You know, you're not going to go in at a 90 de degree angle but rather you're gonna go in turned. So that would be, just think of a lateral side, or if that makes sense, I don't know, you're gonna have it turned, but it's still gonna be 90 degree because that's obviously the angle of the speculum, you can't change that. But like I said, instead of holding it upright during insertion, you're gonna hold it on your side. You're gonna twist your arm and hold it on the side during insertion. So you're just going in just to kind of show you it's on the side, it's not gonna be upright, but rather on the side when you go in and then you're just going to insert it into the vagina. And then once you get in enough, then you would turn it. You've got in there on our turned angle. Then I would say about halfway through insertion, you would turn it upright. And now you would have the speculum upright, inserted further 
into the vagina and then at this point let them know okay I'm gonna open up the speculum a little bit let me know if there's any discomfort I will do this slowly so that it's not painful and then you open it I usually open it till I hear about two clicks essentially you'll be able to see the cervix and you see that little hole there that is our cervix. Now that is a beautiful picture that you would wanna see of your cervix to get a proper visualization and inspection of the cervix. That's what you're doing. You're gonna be visualizing and then you're also gonna be retrieving a sample from the actual cervix. So again, this is what you wanna be able to see, that beautiful donut shaped um, organ there called the cervix, the cervical os there, that little opening there. That is a part of the uterus. And for those of you who've taken anatomy and physiology, you should know that. So at this point, you would have um, inserted, if you're collecting a, a specimen for like a pap smear or for the um, gonorrhea chlamydia test, you would have had your swab and insert through the opening. So the thing I love about these speculums, it's so convenient uh, because it has that opening where you can see and then also the opening, it serves the purpose as inserting, uh, for, meant for inserting the swab through there so that you can swirl and gather your specimen for your pap smear easily and efficiently and then remove that. And then once you're taking out, once you're done with everything, you would let them know, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the speculum, just relax. But before you do so, you wanna definitely unclamp it so that it could be closed and you would just use a twisting motion to remove it out and you have completed your pap smear. So I hope you guys have learned from this video. I know it's you know not the same as actually doing it on a real life per person, but I would honestly say, luckily I had the practice and experience during my women's health clinical um, to do pap smears. My preceptor let me do them hands on. I didn't just sit back. Maybe on like the first day she let me sit back and watch, but then afterwards I was thrown right into it to doing it. So I've gained that comfort level. But then afterwards, you know, when you're done with clinicals and you're preparing for exams, that's time away from you actually practicing, working in the field and doing what you need to. So you tend to lose those skills as the saying goes, use it or lose it. So in this sense, I can honestly say like practicing on this model it puts you in that real live situation as far as handling the equipment, how it would be with the insertion of the speculum and um, just kind of getting used to and familiarizing yourself with how to use the speculum because that's like one aspect of it on its own is getting to know the speculum and how to use it because I can honestly say during my women's health clinical this was a challenge for me like learning to open it properly and keep it stabilized there would be times where I would open it but for whatever reason it didn't lock in place correctly and then now this thing is like not opening and I'm not able to see inside the cervix and then my preceptor had to jump in and kind of, you know, lock it in place and help me along the way, which, you know, of course, practice makes perfect. You're not used to doing these things. You tend to be nervous when you're in <laughs> doing the real life um, demonstration on a real life person. You know, you tend to get nervous and kind of forget some things or um, not really go the way that you're supposed to. But it is good to get that practice in with the speculum. And then like, even if you're able to get a model such as this, you know, whatever works for you. Um, but basically, you know, just really having you know the tools that you need to practice would put you in a position to where you know if you're taking a certain amount of time off from actually being in the field because you're studying for tests or didn't get a job I know there's a lot of nurse practitioners you know who have not found jobs yet because of the job market with COVID everything is just kind of slowing down and there's not enough jobs out there so for whatever the reason if you're not able to really get that practice in I would suggest doing things like this hands-on so that you get that practice you become familiar with the objects and the tools needed to do it and essentially when you're working in the field, working on a real life person, you feel more comfortable because you've had that practice and you've been able to, you know, just kind of develop those key aspects of using, you know, speculum, of getting comfortable with talking with the patient during the process. That could be another, you know, learning curve, learning how to talk through because, some, you know, patients are uncomfortable. You have to make them comfortable. You can't just sit there silent and just do it and they're not knowing what to expect. And now it's like very uncomfortable for them and for you at the same time. So just kind of getting used to um, the whole interaction process as you're going through the motions, as you're doing the exam, as you're doing um, your pap smear, it'll just make you a lot more comfortable so that when you're in that position to working with the patient real life, hands on, on your own, in your medical establishment, then at least you'll know like, oh, I've got this. This ain't bad. I've done this. I know what to do. And then before you know it, it's clicks. It it, it, it's just so easy. It becomes second nature to you. Be sure to like this video. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because there will be more videos like this to come, especially if you guys ask for it. I'll give you what you asked for. Um, but yeah, 
definitely give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and don't forget to comment if you have any questions as far as the certain things, whether it's to this video or any other things, or just comments, concerns, suggestions, video suggestions in the future, please be sure to leave a comment. And I will go ahead and uh, incorporate those next those videos in my next upcoming videos. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Until then, live, love, laugh, and be blessed. Peace, love, and happiness. Bye-bye. Strong, strong. Ooh. 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 Ooh.